To recap, on what we established in my previous film, Apollo 16 took 178 images of the star field in the ultraviolet spectrum. The pro-NASA group had recently argued that the geocorona of Earth would have made it impossible to capture these images from orbit, as the hydrogen corona would have obscured the ultraviolet light. But for this argument to stand up, you would of course have to overlook the supposed UV photography taken aboard Gemini 10, an Earth orbit flight. We concluded that the Apollo 16 photos were probably snapped from orbit and the Earth superimposed into the image. But this raised another question from the pro-NASA side. Sir Mildred Pierce, a vocal proponent of these photos, had wrote in to ask, I wonder if you might elaborate on the claim that the photos could have been faked by superimposing an image of the Earth over an image of the stars. Where did they get the image of the Earth? Why is the shadow of the Earth oriented exactly as it should? More importantly, why are the Arctic and tropical airglow bands, two different features at two different wavelengths, oriented exactly as they ought to be? I can hardly be expected to know for sure where they got the image from. I wasn't part of the conspiracy. My best guess would be that they came from a satellite. This was brought up in his film on the Apollo 16 UV photography. But how do we know these shots were really taken on the moon? Maybe they were taken by a satellite. This is doubtful on its surface if only because we know the photos were shot on film. It was prohibitive to design a satellite to take film photographs as there was no way to ensure the film could get back to Earth. Sir Mildred doesn't elaborate on his claim that it was prohibited for satellites to carry film. In fact, at the dawn of the space race, carrying camera film was a priority for American spy satellites. One such example is the ironically named Corona program. The Corona spy satellites recorded their surveillance photographs on 70mm film and then jettisoned them back to Earth in a protective canister. 144 Corona satellites were launched, 102 of which returned usable images. Therefore, because satellites did indeed successfully return film to Earth, the idea that these images of Earth were obtained by satellite is entirely possible. It's also worth noting that to disguise its true purpose, Corona was given the cover name of Discoverer and described as a scientific research program. In other words, this satellite reconnaissance was done in utmost secrecy. Air Force flying boxcars deploy over the Pacific Ocean target area of the Discoverer 14 nose cone capsule, which is snared in mid-flight as it plummets to Earth from orbit. The mid-air recovery at 10,000 feet is the second recovery of a man-made object from orbit. Shortly afterwards, Russia announced the third successful re-entry of a nose cone carrying two dogs and some rats and mice. Dramatic strides by both sides in the space race give promise of major developments in man's efforts to actually send human explorers into the far reaches of the solar system. America's man in space and satellite research programs mark continued a significant achievement, exemplified by a sky now filled with American moons. Building his argument upon the lack of star photography, Bill Casing came to the conclusion that NASA did this because it was something that they simply couldn't fake. Astronomers could have easily discerned that the, that the star positions were not those that would have appeared in a photograph taken from the moon. So it's another case where they could not fake it, so they simply ignored it. Of course, many have argued that the star positions seen from Earth are exactly the same on the moon, because in the vastness of the universe, 
the stars are just too far away for any change to be noticeable. Can you tell us about the stars that the astronauts would have been like been able to see, like in space or on the moon or whatever? Yep, everything that we can see, they could see. Oh, okay. Oh. Only they could probably, from the surface, from the surface of the moon, if they got out of the sun's glare, they could see it better than we can. Mm. The difference would be is we see the stars twinkling to some extent. Now, they're not doing much twinkling tonight, which is a good sign, but on the moon, uh, they don't twinkle at all. And why is that exactly? Because of the atmosphere. The twinkle is caused by the passage of the light mm. through the Earth's atmosphere. There's no atmosphere on the moon, hence no twinkling. Takes away some of the romance, but the observing would be a lot better, which is why it'd be great to have a big telescope on the moon. <laughs> they actually built a simulator of what the sky would look like on the surface of the moon. And they did that because they wanted to judge um, what it would be like trying to land the, um, the lunar module on the moon's surface. And as they're going, looking through the windows, they were worried about being confused by the positions of all the stars. So they learnt those positions in this simulator. I think it was in the University of North Carolina. It's the only one of its kind in the world. Regardless, Casing's argument can be tested easily. On Apollo 14, just before he climbed back inside Lunar Module Antares, Alan Shepard allegedly took these two snaps of the crescent Earth seen from the Moon's surface. These two images are of great significance because they show not only the Earth, but the planet Venus as well. It has become a trump card used to try and prove that the lunar landings were real. In an article at Wikipedia, we are told The relative positions of the Earth and Venus could not have been anticipated owing to the altered timeline of the mission, and this discovery constitutes proof that these photographs actually were recorded from the surface of the Moon. Using a virtual simulator known as Celestia, we are going to try and recreate the shot. According to the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal, Shepard supposedly recorded these photographs at 12.07 hours Greenwich Mean Time on the 6th of February 1971. Knowing that, we just punch those details into Celestia and voila! We've travelled back in time to the moment when Al Shepard took this photo. Now all we need do is travel to his landing site of Fra Maro and look up to the sky to see the Earth. We are now in the same time and the same place when Shepard supposedly took these photos. Note the respective positions of the planets Earth and Venus. At first, they seem to be in the right place, but when we compare them to the official Apollo 14 photographs, there's a problem. First, let's compare the two original images. We'll adjust them so that the Earth is lined up exactly the same. Watch now as we switch the images. The change in Venus's position is most obvious. Now, let's compare the first image with our still from the Celestia program. Although the phase and position of the Earth are the same, Venus is clearly not in the right place, and is off by thousands of kilometres northeast.
Next, we have the second image. At face value, Venus appears to be in the right place, but upon closer inspection, we find that they still do not match up. Although closer this time, Venus is still slightly off-center, and thus, these two versions overlap each other.